Thank you very much. Um, yeah, hi everyone. My name is Lina. It's easier than Lina Marianne Breitenmoser. And I'm from uh, the University of Applied Sciences um, and Arts, Nordwestern Switzerland, short FHNW. And as nicely introduced by Dr. Bose, I will present, um, actually it's a research project called Optimization of Organic Waste to Energy Systems in India. It's a bilateral research project between our university and the NIRI, the National um, Engineering and Environmental uh, Research Institute based in Nagpur. And this bilateral project is funded by our um, uh, Swiss National Science Foundation and the Department of Science and Technology. So during the next 15 minutes, I will present you um, some ideas of this project. It started like half a year ago, half, yeah, eight months ago. So there are not so much results, but it's, I want to present the concept. So I want to start um, t with some background information and let's see facts or challenges, challenges the Indian subcontinent is facing and on which we actually responded during our project proposal phase. So, I mean, as you know, India is one of the most populous countries and experiences tremendous population growth. Um, it is still an agricultural based country, but um, many Indians um, also live in cities by now. So I think almost one fourth lives in cities. And the urban population, I know it's better, the urban population is increasing um, at a really fast rate. So the downside of urbanization is that there is a tremendous increase in the amount of municipal solid waste. And yeah, you can see it on this graph. So, I mean, if you assume that um, a person produces around 0.5 kg per day of municipal solid waste, um, up to 180 kg per year, I think Switzerland has around 700 kg per capita per year, but I mean, we are like 7 million people and not <laughs> 1.2 billion. Yeah. Municipal solid waste generation is huge and it increases and most of the municipal solid waste comes from the cities. Um, according to policy, it's the municipal um, bodies who have to develop um, the infrastructure for the development, collection, storage, um, the segregation, transportation, but also processing of municipal solid waste. And I think in the new rules, they also um, have to prepare a solid waste management plan um, Yeah, where they come up with a strategy how they want to process with their municipal solid waste. But often it's the case that municipal authorities, they lack suitable strategies. Um, they lack infrastructure and also financial resources to organize a sustainable solid waste management and uh, therefore often more than 90 percent of the municipal solid waste gets disposed of on open dumps. You can see it on the flow chart as well. Um, another problem is that the municipal solid waste which basically comes from residential or commercial areas mostly is sometimes mixed with industrial and hospital waste on these landfills. And yeah, municipal solid waste, or I mean these landfills, they pose significant hazards for health or also the environment in terms of greenhouse gas, for example. Okay. Um, municipal solid waste could be turned to energy. Um, I've learned yesterday that the government of India actually pushes these technologies um, 
quite a lot, <laughs> which, is, which is really nice. Um, they assume that around 12% of the total um, energy generation could be made up from municipal solid waste, but also agricultural waste. And what you can see on the left side is the composition of municipal solid waste in India. Um, as you can see, a lot of the municipal so solid waste is of organic content. We also have some recyclables like glass plastic, metals and these kind of things and inerts. But this huge um, organic waste fraction makes municipal solid waste a potential feedstock, feedstock for anaerobic digestion. There are other waste to energy technologies. I won't go into detail. Um, yeah. Maybe a few words on anaerobic digestion. Um, anaerobic digestion is based on um, a biological process done by microorganisms which break down the biodegradable material in absence of oxygen um, into biogas. Biogas could f um, further be refined to biomethane and can be applied to um, yeah, a wide field of, it has um, um, a broad field of potential applications. Um, there are a lot of advantages as well. So you can recover energy out of bio or out of bio waste and also high grade fertilizer. It's applicable from small to large scale as Dr. Sheena nicely uh, presented in the previous presentation. And yeah, you can reduce the municipal waste disposal and you need less land area. But um, Anaerobic digestion is really, I mean, waste segregation is needed to improve, to improve the digestion efficiency. It's really um, important because impurities in the substrate um, are not really desirable. So Many parts of India are really suitable for anaerobic digestion, um, not only because of the climate, but because you have a lot of um, organic waste available. Um, estimations from, I think, Dr. Rao, I, he assumes that around 40,000 um, million cubic meters of methane per year could derive from different waste streams. He does not include wastewater, so the potential would be even higher. Um, but the energy potential so far is not used. So as said before, there is a huge untapped potential. And on the right side, you can see that, as I said before, there are different capacity ranges. And mostly, biogas is applied on household level or community biogas plants at the moment. So under these aspects, um, we developed our project because so far no strategies have been assessed in India um, for municipal authorities to actually improve their solid waste management system um, by linking it to a de decentralized energy production. So our project, as I said before, is funded under the Industries Joint Research Program um, under the project lead of Dr. Sunil Kumar of the Solid and Hazardous Waste Department at Deary and our professor Thomas Winkens um, from the Institute for Ecopreneurship. Um, we won this project in a call on biomedical research, medical technology and renewable energy. And as I said before, it started like eight months ago. And I will present you just some of the main objectives or what we want to do during the next two and a half years. 
So the main aim is to develop um, a roadmap or let's say a step-by-step -step tool set for decision makers, how to plan for a sustainable organic waste um, valorization or utilization um, to biogas production. Um, the quantity and composition of municip municipal solid waste and other waste streams varies significantly uh, on spatial but also temporal term. So a first step to achieve this um, is to identify and characterize the current organic waste flows, site specifically, um, and also what we aim to do in the first step is to actually evaluate different waste to energy facilities or let's say different biomass facilities so far and to learn um, about <coughs> promoting factors and challenge, challenges as well. Then in the second step we want to um, experimentally derive the methane potential of the um, characterized or the identified um, organic waste flows and then come up with different bio-waste utilization scenarios. Okay. Um, as I said before, the quantity and quality of municipal solid waste can vary uh, depending, for example, on the size of a community. We include six case study sites in our project, um, ranging from small villages um, to cities. So I think we have, you know, you don't see it very well, but we have two villages included, uh, Diolapar and Pachgaon, which are placed around Nagpur. Um, then we have two towns, which are Ambarnat and Badlapur, and yeah, two bigger cities like Tane and Nagpur. Nagpur is a really urban area. Then uh, Ambarnath, for example, has also a lot of agricultural area and Panchgaon, the village, is really agricultural based. So, as also indicated before, if you plan for a biogas plants, you need a lot of information on the substrate what type of substrate is um, available, what is the amount, what is the energy content, content throughout the year. So um, often this information is not directly available and yeah, it, it requires an understanding of the most important organic waste streams within a relevant um, geographical scale and that's why we use GIS to delineate our case study boundaries and we lose use land use and land cover maps to see where the agricultural areas or the urban areas in our system boundary is. And based on agricultural data, for example, we come up with a, an estimated theoretical biocast potential at a case study site. And what we also do is a lot of surveys and stakeholder interviews for example, with the de decision makers to understand actually how the solid waste management system is at the moment taking place and how it could be improved. And based on this, we develop material flow analysis um, charts. Um, material flow analysis is a method to describe, investigate, and evaluate flows and processes. And it's actually quite nice planning tool and easy to apply as well. Um, just to give you an idea how this would look like, um, it's rather small, but on the left side you can see a material flow analysis of Ambernat. So you see different waste streams. I think it's wet weight, amount of, yeah, of amount of wet weight in kgs of um, a residential waste stream, commercial waste stream, then we have included market waste and agricultural residues. And based on these um, waste streams and literature values, you can come up with an energy potential. And yeah, you can see it in the table below. Um, so in Ambernat, 
biogas could be most probably produced from residential or agricultural waste streams. Um, but in terms of total energy potential, it's, it's I mean, it's one to four percent of the total energy demand in, in Ambernat, which seems rather small. But we also have to say here that so far we did not include the animal manure wastewater industri or industrial waste streams in our model. And yeah, this is something we have to do in the next step. Um, we also have to see that the theoretical potential, what we assess with this approach, is uh, far bigger than the, reali um, than the realistic potential because often substrate um, can be used alternatively. So in rural areas, for example, the animal manure is used for, um, yeah, it's burned. It's, it's used for heat production. Um, yeah, okay. What we also have to do or what is also an ongoing step is to chemically characterize our substrates and um, we have to come up with the actual methane potential of our substrate. This is what we are doing in our labs at the moment. We try to um, evaluate the substrate spe spe specific biogas potential. We try um, <coughs> to mix the substrates um, co-digest the substrates and yeah, imp ex actually maximize the methane yield. Um, you can see some pictures. We use um, BMP assay batches, but also um, yeah, we have bigger digesters, around 20 liters. And then the idea is to have some pilot systems um, based on the available substrates we will choose a suitable system in one to two of our case study sites and evaluate um, evaluate the systems under field conditions. So it's the aim of this project is not really to bring new technological technological innovations, but rather to work with existing technologies, um, but provide like optimal operational procedures and. Yeah, one possible case study or one possible pilot site we are discussing right now is to implement a small um, biogasifier at the Nagpur vegetable market because right now this waste stream directly goes to the landfill. Okay. So, other next steps would be to, yeah, as I said before, we have to develop all the material flow analysis for all our case study sites and what we also want to do is to include stakeholders to actually in include economic, environmental and social parameters in our material flow analysis and to come up with sustainable solutions or sustainable scenarios and yeah, the expected output is as I said before like a step by step a decision support tool set for decision makers um, which they could apply. Yeah, I think that's it. Do you, okay. huh? <laughs> Thank you, Lena. <laughs> and any, any questions to Lena or any of the other other panelists, uh, speakers at this time? Uh, my question to uh, Ms. Lena. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you, you talked about, sorry. You talked about different uh, feed stocks or organic matters, but mm -hmm. to deal with different feed stocks in a single biorector or digester, it is difficult task. Mm -hmm. Suppose if you are talking about the agricultural waste, and uh, on uh, another hand, on another hand, uh, if you are taking uh, cow dung, mm -hmm. so uh, that KVIC or the Mandu model you can use for that cow dung, but uh, that agricultural waste you can't use those uh, digesters because uh, due to the low density they float on the uh, surface, yeah. or that that is the issue. And mixing is also a problem. 
Yeah, I heard about that. Right. So for that, uh, what, what uh, can be done and that in that direction also uh, you can think about? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, with our assessment, we really want to see which waste streams could be digested. And on if we decide on which waste streams will be di um, digested, we will decide on the technology. I mean, Neri has a lot of expertise. It's not excluded that we will come up, come up with a, maybe a little bit adaptive technology design on the basis of the waste, waste stream. This is something we have to develop. Um, we are aware of these kind of problems, but yeah, I still think we can come up with a technology which, which works also on a mix maybe different waste streams but it, for sure it also includes um, a lot of training I mean people have to get trained they have to be um, aware that um, appropriate mixing is really important for biogas production You're welcome hello but madam, my question is, mm -hmm. what is the operational cost for each uh, this one? The operational cost? Yeah. Well, I think this depends on the type of digester and because we did not decide yet, uh, I can't say at the moment. Or did I get your question wrong? What do you mean with operational cost? So to for that? this particular process, what will, what will be the for first uh, stage or uh, whatever, uh, total cost for getting uh, the output for one uh, batch? So in that. I don't get it. <laughs> I was just asking like what is the solution you're proposing, yeah. what is the cost of that, but I think you yeah. haven't reached yet, right? No, we haven't reached this stage. Okay. We haven't reached this stage. Hello, uh, madam, mm -hmm. I have one question for you. That is, uh, we have seen that uh, during winter condition, uh, condition or, lo or lower temperature, the yield of biogas process, this, all these biochemical reactions are very much poor. Mm -hmm. So have you worked anything on that? Um, we try to, be, I, I mean, we are aware of these facts, okay. but I think in Maharashtra it's not that much of a problem. Yeah, in Maharashtra that is not much, yeah, but in, in our, uh, yeah, yeah, right, in, in our, <laughs> Um, I just know that um, a colleague of mine is working in Nepal in really, really cold areas and they were running some experiments there and they had the really nice idea to put the digesters in like, let's say, greenhouse gases where they grow the vegetables. Could be an option, but okay, it's but not, I mean, it's for this project we don't have to yes, yes. deal with these issues. Okay. Thank you. Temperature is good for biogas in Maharashtra.